What is it like creating a, a universe? Um, time consuming. I don't know how he managed it in seven days, frankly. Um, the books I've I just written, which is The Abyss Beyond Dreams, and the, the follow-up to that, The Night Without Stars, two book thing, it will take me three years to write. The first six months of that is just purely note making, making sure the, the universe fits together. If you've got technology at, at this level, then you know, how does your how does that react with people? Uh, what kind of t a living standard will they have? What kind of economy, what kind of politics? It all has to mesh together before I'll actually sit down with, with page one, chapter one. My brain just hurt just, how do you, like, when you talk about note taking, I mean, I take notes but then I lose them and I just, how do you organise all that? Um, it's kind of an organic process. I come up with well, the, the original idea for the book, okay, which was set in the void. Um, okay, so what kind of society we're going to have? Uh, where's it going to be? Who, if you have that particular type of society, what kind of people are going to be in it? It all grows and builds from that. So it's, it, like I say, it's an organic process. So I, I was on your website and I noticed that there's a um, sort of an overview of 1,500 years between the two series within the, yeah. within, the within the universe. Now, you know, you just it's also just kind of dot, 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 this was this what happening. Yeah, that's godlike. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I imagine uh, someone coming to you at Supernova and going. Yeah, but what happened between those? And you go, well... Here it is. Here yeah, it is. no, uh, again, that's, that's part of the whole world building process of, of how we got from where we are now to, you know, 2,000, 3,000 years in the future. That's just, to me, it's intrinsic. You have to have that to back it up. Simple reason is, um, it has to work in my mind because if I don't believe it, uh, I, I can't make the reader believe it. Yeah. It's, um, it's all there, the detail is all there, but it's, it's like the iceberg. It's only 10% is visible. But I have done the groundwork to make the society work. So it, when you're reading it, you think, oh, yeah, that, that could work. That, if, if that happened, so that would happen. So that's, that's all part of, 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 of the very basic building blocks of science fiction. So in a sense, it's like the, the slackers of writing who just write small novels about one or two people and only choose a scene to write about, but you need to know that they've got a backstory for that. I do, know. yeah, absolutely. But you're just doing the whole universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to talk about the, the, the term space opera because yeah. I was looking into it and I, I, I've been using it for years and I hadn't ever, I'd always assumed it was one, one kind of thing and I hadn't actually seen the sort of the more negative aspects of, of how they describe it. Are you comfortable with being in, considered a writer of space opera? Yeah, I mean, um, even in space opera, there's, there's still a huge variety of space operas, different genres of it. Um, so I, I don't see it as a negative thing at all. Um, I'm, quite, I'm quite proud to write space opera. Space opera was one of the things that, that I was reading when I was a kid. I grew up in, in Rutland in, in the UK, which is the middle of rural nowhere. Um, and, then, and I found the, the, the science fiction section in the library. And that was my, my escapism. And that's why I write the kind of, of science fiction, call it space opera, please do. But that's what I, what I want to instill in my readers is this sense of escapism, this sense of wonder that I had as a kid. Um, that's what I want to try and recreate for them now. And who were the, the, the big influences as a um, kid? I came up reading the classics of science fiction, Heinlein, Asimov, uh, Clarke, all this. And then, um, then when I was 13 or 14, I discovered E. Doc Smith and the Lensman series, which I don't want to read now because I have such great memories of it. And it was written in the 40s. Um, and that, that, was the, that was the real escapism in those days, was, was the Landsman series. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the route I came up with, and that's what steered me into science fiction. And things like the, um, the popularity of something like Star Wars, I mean there was a lot of going down the science fiction line in, 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 at school and in, in, in social life, it was kind of, you know, you, you were kind of a, walking a path that then people were going to describe you as this kind of person. When yeah. Star, Star Wars boomed, and everyone was into science fiction yes. um, and Star Trek and, 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 and the like. Um, it was far more inclusive. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, did that give you the, the opportunity then to think seriously about becoming a writer? Of um, I, I came to writing quite late. It was one of those things, because I, I, I read avidly when I was a kid, and I, you know, mostly science fiction. Um, and it was always there at the back of my mind, uh, as it is with a lot of people, well, I could do this, I'd like to give this a go. And... I, I did nothing about it for quite a while, and then uh, personal circumstances, I, was, I, was, uh, I came home to help look after my mother, who was quite ill at the time, 
and, and I, it occurred to me that if I don't try this now, I was age 27, this was when I was 27, uh, is if I, I'm at home, I've got plenty of spare time, if I don't try this now, I never will. Mm -hmm. So I went out and bought a typewriter. I mean, this was pre-word processing. Um, and just started, just just gave it a go, and I'm making. I'm I'm really simplifying this, but but that was what what started me off. That was the, that was the kick, and then uh, about three or four years later I, of of short stories, my apprenticeship, if you like, in the field, I sold the first book, which was Mind Star Rising. I think there's a few booksellers out there chuckling at the idea that you started off with short stories. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe these days, but I did. I used it. I've lost. I've completely lost the knack of it now. But yeah, that, that, that was how I started. Well, you, you know, you're famous for the big book. I mean, as, as a bookseller, we've always gone, hmm, how are we going to fit these guys on the shelf? And they look yeah. fantastic together. But they also have this emotional relationship with a big book. If you read a big book and you love that big book, you become a walking, talking advertisement for that book. You, you're so connected to it. Did you find that? Yeah, I mean, part of, part of the appeal, I think, of my, of my books is that they're very immersive. There is, I mean, I was talking about the detail, there's a lot of detail hidden, but you get a sense for the world by the, the sheer way I, I write them, the descriptions of, of stuff that goes on in there, which is not dialogue, which is not action. It's just immersing you in the world to, to make it more real to you. And I think that, as I say, that is the appeal to an awful lot of people. And you can't do that with a small book. There's nothing wrong with small books. Small books are great. It, uh, every book, every story is its own length, and my stories are this length. And um, the idea of human nature, um, it seems sort of earthbound, and, and because, yeah. of, because of the way we're, we're, we're raised and the circumstances and the environment we're involved in, and the needs of our biology for this particular planet, how do you, when you go out into, into the universe, how do you, do you, do you have a fixed idea of, of human nature? Uh, are you, are you allowing the circumstances of new worlds to affect how people um, behave? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is, that is one of the fundamentals of science fiction. I mean, um, new ideas, new technologies come along. And, and yes, they're very shiny gadgets and very, very lovely to describe. But I am more interested in the impact they have on us as a society. I mean, look how the, the impact that the, the Internet has had on us mm. as a society. And that was just one concept, and, and we keep developing on, on all frontiers. Science is just going further and further out there. Medical technology is having a huge effect. We're living longer, which is affecting the economy because it costs more. The treatments cost more, and we're living longer, and we've got to provide pensions and care for, for older people. Uh, and it, it all has a cumulative effect. So when you're a thousand years in the future and you've got 50 new technologies that are impacting them, and they take it for the, these people living in those universes, it, it's not outstanding, it's not remotely um, new or anything. But to us, looking at the kind of effects and the, the promise of some technologies, that's the key, that's the fundamental thing.